Hello everyone, welcome back. Till now we have seen two main theories of impression making. So moving on towards the last major theory which is the most commonly applied theory in impression making for complete denture. Now there are one or two more theories that I'll just mention about at the end of this video. So the theory that we are going to see today is known as selective pressure theory. I hope the name itself is self-explanatory where in certain areas of mucosa we apply pressure and in certain areas we apply minimal pressure that means it is nothing but you are going to apply pressure selectively like some part of the mucosa will have more pressure and some part of mucosa will have less pressure so till now we have seen mucostatic and mucocompressive theory which are like the two extreme points for example if at one extreme point you have your mucostatic theory and on the other end you have mucocompressive theory so in mucostatic theory what we have seen is in this you are recording the impression in which the mucosa is at rest mucocompressive theory on the other hand is like you are applying definite pressure all around the mucosa so this both theories they have their own merits and demerits and because of that only they thought why not get something that is between these two extreme point on extreme one point was your mucostatic and on the other end was the mucocompressive theory and because of that only they came up with this selective pressure theory which is like in between these two extreme points of the theories this selective pressure theory it combines the merits of both mucostatic theory and mucocompressive theory so what this merits were for this particular theories that is your mucostatic and mucocompressive you need to go through those video to understand this theory well so this theory it was proposed by Boucher now in this technique what was done so they made the use of a special or a custom tray to record the impression so these custom trays they are designed individually for each patient such that it contacts the stress bearing and the support areas only now what the stress bearing and support areas are we are going to see that in the later part that will be the anatomical landmarks now just a zest like what exactly this stress bearing supporting areas are so for example now over here is your maxilla so it has three types of areas that is stress bearing area limiting areas and the relief area now stress bearing or supporting areas as the name says you can apply maximum pressure to this areas if areas as the name says we should relieve this areas due to n number of reasons because now if we apply pressure on this relief areas some or the other bad effects are going to happen so because of that you need to relieve certain areas of maxilla and mandible so coming back to our topic what we do is firstly as i said we are going to make a special tray like basically we are using these special trays to record the impression for the selective pressure theory and then you just add up the wax on the areas that needs to be relieved now as i said we have three areas those are the stress bearing or the supporting areas limiting areas and the relief areas relief as i said it needs to be relieved so because of that what you're going to do is you're going to just like add a layer of wax on those areas now which are the relief areas of maxilla and mandible so relief areas of maxilla are incisive papilla and mid palatine raphae over here this is your incisive papilla and this is the mid palatine raphae and in mandible the relief areas are the crest of the alveolar ridge mental foramen over here and one more relief area is the genile tubercle of the severely resorbed ridge so these are like the relief areas of the maxilla and the mandible so now over here can you see it's like i have just like adapted a layer of wax on this relief areas so this was your incisive papilla and mid palatine raphae similarly i have just like adapted a layer of wax on this areas why are this called relief areas why do we need to relieve this areas everything again as i said i'll cover in the anatomical like landmarks of the maxilla and the mandible for now you just need to remember that yes these are like the various relieving areas of maxilla and mandible what you have done as i said we have adapted a layer of wax now 
as you add a layer of wax definitely while recording the impression complete tray will be in contact with the mucosa right but now next what you're going to do is you're going to remove that wax so now you have removed this wax as soon as you have removed the wax you will see that the area where the wax was added will no more be in contact with the mucosa because over here the gap is created as soon as the wax is removed the tray is not in contact with the relief areas so this is like the main motive of doing this selective pressure theory now in this technique what we exactly do is so firstly we make a primary compound impression so this is the first step and then what you'll do is you'll make a final impression with a custom tray that contains a low viscosity impression material like zinc oxide eugenol over here as it is shown in this picture this is the zinc oxide eugenol impression or you can use a light body elastomer this final impression it will create a impression which is known as a wash impression which is like barely 0.25 millimeters in thickness and this will record the relief areas with minimal pressure whereas the supporting or the stress bearing area with considerable pressure now some authors they have suggested the use of medium bodied elastomer rather than using the light body elastomer now in this what they have done is they also added a spacer along with the relief wax this impression it is usually made with the finger pressure or you can also make this impression with the help of the closed mouth technique hence to sum up this technique it is the combination of yes there will be maximum coverage of the denture bearing areas then there is a good contact on the stress bearing areas there is the intimate contact on the stuff supporting and the stress bearing areas and on the other side you will see that even there is minimal or light pressure on the weak tissues that is your relief areas so this technique is like the combination of everything in which like the relief areas they have less pressure whereas the stress bearing areas they will have more pressure and also maximally the denture will be covered all over the mucosa and this is the reason why this technique is the widely used one now why actually it was considered to make use of this technique this is because relief areas will not make contact with the denture at rest and thereby unnecessary pressure is not applied so in this relief area is not going to make contact till now what we have discussed about it but now in this there's one more thing now as the relief areas definitely they are not making contact when not in function but at the same time they cannot bear the pressure when the patient is chewing because they are not in good contact what is the principle behind this theory so they have believed that the mucosa over the stress bearing area is best to withstand the pressure so they thought that why not apply all the pressure on this areas only whereas the relief areas they are very thin they contain very little submucosal tissue and because of that they cannot take that pressure so it is better to relieve those areas actually moving on towards the advantages and disadvantages of this theory so advantages are basically the ones we saw for the mucostatic and the mucocompressive theory that was it will have good retention there are less chances of the residual ridge resorption there will be less trauma to the tissues etc all of those advantages we have already discussed in those particular theories itself now we are going to talk about the disadvantages of this particular theory so the first disadvantage is it feels impossible to record the areas with varying pressure like just think about it practically when all these structures they are so closely associated and for example i am saying that i need this area with less pressure but this area it needs to be like recorded with very good amount of pressure so this feels like impossible right so because of that this is the major disadvantage that it is impossible to record the areas with varying pressure next disadvantage is now in some areas they are still recorded under the functional load which aren't to be recorded and because of that there are the chances as i said in the muco compressive theory chances of rebounding of the tissue and eventually that will lead to loose denture so as soon as you remove the pressure the tissue it rebounds back the mucosa it rebounds back to its normal position and because of that the dentures they become loose now despite all of this 
like demerits of this particular theory still this theory is the most popular and the most widely used one there are two more theories that i said about so one more is the myostatic theory myo is nothing but muscle so this theory it was proposed by john frush so this theory it was given by john frush where he considered the muscle attachment also with the impressions why because muscles they also play an important role in good denture fabrication so this was the like motive for this myostatic theory another theory is known as the dynamic impression theory so this theory it was given by chase where in this theory he used the auto polymerizing resin to record the impression because he believed that a perfect impression it is created by a slow molding material so that was all about the theories of impression making i hope you found this video helpful and if you did then please like comment share and do subscribe to my channel thank you so much